The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12163 in the name of Mike McKenzie on average speed cameras on the A9. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Mr McKenzie, if you're ready, uh, seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, President Officer. I've had a particular affection for the A9 since I helped build part of it during the long hot summer of 1976. It was a massive improvement on the previous road, but few people predicted back then that Inverness would grow at the rate it has and become such an economic success story. And few people predicted that the road would have to carry the amount of traffic that it now does. And Few people back then could have imagined how fast and how powerful modern vehicles have become. And three years later, in the summer of 1979, my grandparents were killed in a road accident which involved both alcohol and excessive speed on the part of the other driver or the driver of the other vehicle. I therefore have first-hand knowledge of the devastating effect of road traffic accidents on families and ever since I've had a heightened awareness of road safety. That's why I'm so pleased that this government has introduced a lower alcohol limit when driving. And that's why I'm pleased that this government continues its focus on improving road safety. And that's why I'm pleased that this government continues to improve the quality of our road infrastructure because the design and the quality of our roads is in itself an important component of road safety. And that's why I'm also pleased that the A9 average speed camera scheme is proving to be successful, with a reduction in speeding cases down from 1 in 3 to 1 in 20, and excessive speeding down by 97%. Because, presiding officer, there's no question that speed is a significant factor perhaps the most significant factor in serious and fatal accidents. But it's not just the implementation of the A9 speed cameras that are important. It's important to the way in which it has been done. The Scottish Government has followed an evidence-based approach, looking closely at examples from other countries and from the average speed camera experience on the A77. And the Scottish Government has consulted widely, most obviously with a wide group of stakeholders that make up the A9 safety group, including Transport Scotland, Police Scotland, Highland, Tayside and Central Scotland Safety Camera Partnerships, Highland Council, Perth and Kinross Council, Bear Scotland, the Road Haulage Association, the Freight Transport Association, the Federation of Small Businesses, the Confederation of Passenger Transport, the Institute of Advanced Motorists, Stagecoach, SDI and others. The proposals and the strategy have therefore been informed by all of this informed opinion. And again, in keeping with its overall strategy, the Scottish Government is looking closely at how the scheme is operating and con continues to do so, analysing the data carefully as it becomes available. And that's why we know that the results after the first three months are so encouraging. But this is not just a question of encouraging safer and more responsible driving. It also goes hand in hand with a commitment to complete the duelling of the A9 between Perth and Inverness by 2025. Mm -hmm. And this Scottish Government is the first to give this commitment to duelling the A9. Yeah. The biggest transport project Scotland has ever known, with a cost of around three billion pounds. Presiding officer, I was delighted as a member of the ICI committee to learn how well the Queen's Ferry Crossing project is progressing, being both on time and below budget. I'm even more pleased to learn that some of the anticipated savings are allowing the earlier progression of some of the first phases of the A9 dueling project. This is a great example of success building on success. Transport Scotland 
is due great credit for this. And this is what good government, working hand in hand with competent government agencies, looks like. On Friday, I drove from Edinburgh to Inverness, much of that journey on the A9, on a day of blue skies and silver sunshine, with some snow still on the hills and more on the mountains. And I drove through this enchanting landscape with vista after vista opening up before me, through a landscape where the road signs conjured up much of Scotland's history, from Killycrankie to Culloden. It was a very pleasant journey, made at a good average speed through smoothly flowing traffic. Slowing down a bit can add a little quality to our lives, as well as improving safety. President Officer, the Press and Journal helpfully produced a survey that suggests that the public are happy with average speed cameras on the A9. But I must finish by condemning those politicians who have seen this issue as a bandwagon on which to jump. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking in particular of Danny Alexander, Chief Secretary to the Treasury, who's blown on some slight embers of discontent, hoping to fan them into a bonfire, merely as a means of opening up an assault on the SNP government. There's no place in Scotland for that kind of irresponsible mm -hmm. and shameless politics. It's time for Mr Alexander to get behind the Scottish Government's efforts to improve safety and to stop playing politics with this important issue. Yeah. Many thanks. Now Colin David Stewart to be followed by Murdo Fraser. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and could I pass my congratulations to Mike McKenzie in his efforts in securing tonight's uh, very important debate. He also revealed to us all that he used to work on the A9, and I don't know if he's considering offering his services to Transport Scotland to help build the duelling of the A9 in the future. I'm sure if he makes a request to the Whip's office, they'll consider a short period of uh, respite for him for a couple of years. Um, but I would like to focus my remarks on road safety as a road safety campaigner. As Mike McKenzie rightly said, the A9 has acquired an almost mythical infamy. Even people who have never driven on the road be well aware of the notorious A9 and how dangerous it seemingly is. But of course, presiding officer, one death on Scottish roads is one too many. This is why road safety is vitally important and why we as politicians have to do all we can do to support the police and other agencies to make our roads safer. For example, if you look at 2010, there was 208 people were killed on Scotland's roads. 1,960 were recorded as seriously injured and 11,156 suffered slight injury. Most of the casualties were travelling in cars. Over 2,000 were pedestrians, over 800 were motorcyclists, and over 700 were, were, were pedocyclists. Just in one second, I'll just finish this point, uh, President Officer. And there were 1,375 travel casualties, of whom four died. Stevenson? Um, I just wonder if the member might care to look at the number he had for who were killed on our roads. We seem to hear 2008 in these benches, and I think it's a tenth of that. Davis, Chair. But I think the key point, President Officer, the figures are declining, and that's a good point I think we can all be united on. But what does concern me is that fatality numbers are highest among young adults, with 22% of fatalities on Scottish roads over the last five years, when 16 to 24 year olds only make up a tenth of the total population. And as members will know, there's particular concern in the Highlands and Islands and North East who have a disproportionately high death rate among young drivers. Now the police tell me, as Mike McKenzie pointed out earlier, that of course speed is the biggest contribute factor in road casualties. Over half of the drivers killed die in collisions on country roads, and of course, collision risk rises the faster a driver travels. So, for example, at 25% above the average speed, a driver is about six times more likely to have a collision than a driver travelling at the average speed. And the direct cost of road accidents involving deaths or injuries in Scotland is approximately three billion a year. But every pound spent in road safety enforcement or safety camera enforcement is five pounds saving to the emergency services. And having been a driver myself for over 40 years, 
and I suppose a veteran of the A9 Inverness to Perth route in particular, I feel some experience to offer the Chamber on this particular route. So few issues have been raised so frequently by motorists on the issue of the A9 as the issue of the 40 mile an hour speed limit previously for HGVs. Uh, that's why in December 2012, I jointly launched a campaign with HGV driver uh, Connor McKenna to have the speed of HGVs increased in the A9 as a pilot from 40 to 50. My motivation in setting up this campaign was purely to try something different, try something that would maybe just reduce uh, driver frustration. My logic was that if HGVs travelled faster by 10 miles an hour to 50, then all traffic would increase speed to an acceptable and appropriate level and there would be less inclination to do dangerous uh, overtaking. There's also a quite interesting climate change issue, which Mr. Stevenson might be interested in, is that the, the haulage industry tell me that an HGV driving in a higher gear at 50 mile an hour is actually less emitting than an HGV vehicle driving at 40 in a lower uh, gear. So there's actually a climate change boost to increasing speed, which seems counterintuitive, but is correct. But members will be aware that the pilot was introduced during October last year, along with the A9 uh, speed cameras. So, since March 2010, I've been heavily involved in road safety at every opportunity. A last time doesn't allow me, President Officer, to talk about the graduated driving licence scheme. But I would thank the Scottish Government, who have been very supportive of this reserved issue. And I've made attempts by having meetings with UK ministers to try and ensure that we introduce a scheme in Scotland which would show a reduction of 21 deaths in young drivers and over £80 million, something we'd welcome the Minister's views on uh, in the wind-up. And again, can I thank Mike McKenzie for this excellent debate and congratulate him on the work he does on road safety. Hey, thanks. And I now call on Murdo Fraser to be followed by Dave Thompson. Uh, thank you. Can I uh, congratulate Mike McKenzie on securing uh, the debate and thank you for bringing his motion to Parliament. Uh, like David Stewart, I'm a regular user uh, of the A9 and indeed uh, the road is very important to my Perthshire uh, constituents. But not just that, because people from across the whole of Scotland will have an interest in the safety of the road and what can be done to improve it. I think it's essential that the Scottish Parliament debates issues important to the people of Scotland. And I can think of a few subjects that have generated as much commotion and heat as the question of average speed cameras on the A9. The number of, of people who are members of online campaign groups calling either for the removal of the speed cameras or for speedier, speedier duelling totals nearly 30,000. So clearly it's an issue very much in the public eye and one that is not going to go away. When the average speed cameras were first suggested, I was generally open to the idea. Anything that can be done to improve road safety on this Scotland's most dangerous road should be encouraged. I was, however, strongly of the view that the speed cameras could only be introduced in tandem with a rise in HGV speed limits to 50 miles per hour on single carriageways. This was a case uh, vigorously put by people in this chamber, David Stewart amongst them, uh, and other campaign groups uh, outside, including the uh, road hauliers. And I'm pleased that the Scottish Government listened to these voices and brought in the pilot speed increase. And I understand uh, it is working very well and the feedback has been very encouraging. We're now six months on after average speed cameras have gone live, as Mr McKenzie's uh, motion indicates. So where are we now? Well, I fear Mr McKenzie is just being a little bit premature in celebrating a success. One thing is clear, speed has been reduced. That fact is almost undisputable. But is the road safer as a result? I'm not so sure. Scarcely a week goes by when I don't open the pages of the, the Courier or the Press and Journal to read about yet another serious crash or another deadly near miss. It was just two weeks ago we saw yet another tragedy, a, a horrible double fatality on the Perth section of the A9 near Dunkeld as a result of a head-on accident. Now we don't know all the details of that and we shouldn't speculate, but sadly we continue to see people die on the A9. And we continue to see near misses. The week before last, a video went viral of a dramatic near miss close to Blair Athol. Almost every major Scottish news outlet ran a story on it. And even the New York Daily News featured a different near miss from the week previous on their online edition. This is global recognition for Scotland, but entirely of the wrong kind. 
Proponents of average speed cameras claim that reducing speeding has ultimately made the roads safer. But that assumes that speed is the primary factor in accidents on the A9. As has been mentioned time and time again, road layout and driver frustration are responsible for a large percentage of collisions on the road. So I think until we have a full year of evidence on the accident statistics, it is too early to celebrate the success of the average speed cameras. And of course, we know on the A9, because it's a very important tourist route, the road traffic levels on the summer, and therefore the propensity for accidents to take place, are much higher during the summer months than they are over the winter. So I do not think, uh, if Mr McKenzie will forgive me, that we can rush to judgment on this, and we need to wait until we gather more evidence. I hope that the Scottish Government will resist the urge to install more average speed cameras on different roads across Scotland until we have concrete full year results and a proper opportunity to scrutinise these. Presiding officer, in creating transport policy, I strongly believe that the Scottish Government should consult with the people who use the road, the drivers and those who live in the vicinity. Taking into account their views is a must. I'm very pleased to note that uh, right at the moment, Transport Scotland are having public consultation on the proposed Dalwini Junction, and I would ask them to take a similar approach if they are considering rolling out average speed cameras to other trunk roads across the country. Presiding officer, everyone in this chamber is united in their desire to see the A9 lose its reputation as Scotland's deadliest road. I hope that average speed cameras are part of the cure. You we will be able to make a please. judgment on that, not today, but in due course. In the meantime, I still believe that the only long-term solution is a fully dualled road, and I would urge the Scottish Government to press ahead with our current duelling plans. Thank you. Many thanks. Now call on Dave Thompson to be followed by Liam McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, now, we all know, as has been said already this evening, that the A9 uh, average speed camera has actually been a resounding success. Although I would, uh, you know, agree to an extent with uh, Murdo Fraser. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. I would agree to an extent with Murdo Fraser that all of the evidence isn't in yet. But I think there's sufficient evidence there to show us that it has been very, very successful to date. And despite some continuing accidents, which are tragic, of course. I hope that they will remain at a much lower level than was previously the case before the speed cameras. The system cost £3 million, and it has been credited with uh, cutting the number of people speeding on the A9, as has been said already. I do believe the road is much safer. I, like others, have driven on that road. Uh, I've been driving on that road for... Ooh, since about the mid-60s, when I first, uh, 67, I think, I first passed my driving test. I remember travelling from Lossiemouth to Edinburgh and taking seven hours uh, on the old A9, nose to tail, the whole way. A big chunk of the A9 runs through my constituency in Badenoch, uh, a very important part of my uh, constituency. In fact, three times over the years, I have managed to avoid head-on collisions uh, with various different vehicles when coming round corners or driving at night. Uh, I've been very fortunate three times when somehow or other I managed to, just at the right time when someone com was coming towards me, get into a lay-by that just happened to be there. Three times that's happened to me. I hope it doesn't happen again because I'm not sure the lay-by would be there uh, next time. So I'm very aware of the dangers of, uh, of the A9. The other very encouraging thing, I think, was the way that the government did listen in relation to the heavy goods vehicles. And a number of members have already said that they made representations and campaigned with others, as did I. Uh, and I, I met with the Transport Minister, Keith Brown, at the time and his officials and made a very strong case to them that the limit had to be increased because it would have been an absolute disaster if the average speed ca cameras had come on and we'd left the limit at 40. That would have just not worked and it would have created an awful lot of frustration. So the 50 limit was crucial 
And driving on the A9 now, you'll actually find um, you're driving at about 54, 55 for a lot of the way if you do come up behind uh, an HGV. And that's perfectly acceptable because you get to the dual carriageway stretches and you can get by them at those. And even some of the two plus ones, which I'm not very keen on, I would have to say. However, the, um, the scheme, the, 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 the average speed cameras haven't been without their detractors. And as Mike McKenzie said, the Lib Dems in particular uh, seem to have a, a strange logic and teamed up with anyone who had anything negative to say about the speed cameras. Thankfully, they have stopped their silly posturing now as the evidence is coming through to show that it is indeed working. I think we also need to look more broadly, and uh, I think Mike McKenzie mentioned the introduction of the new drink driving limit, something I campaigned for from 2007 until eventually we wore the Westminster government down and forced them to devolve it to us. It took over five years. The Scottish government acted within about five months or not much longer once they had the power, and I was very pleased about that. The speed cameras are a road safety issue. The drink driving limit is a road safety issue. Safety must always be our top priority. But as this Scottish Government, and I have to thank them, uh, gets the duelling of the A9 underway, and that's happening now, you'll see real progress from now on. And within 10 years, if not less than that, we are going to see a fully duelled A9, which I think is something that everybody in this chamber well, welcome. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And thank you. And due to the number of members still wishing to speak in the debate, I'm reminded to accept a motion under Rule 8.14.3 that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. And Mr McKenzie, would you move such a motion? Formally moved. Many thanks. So the question is, are we agreed that we'll extend the debate by up to 30 minutes? We are. Thank you very much. I now call on Dave Thompson to be followed. Um, no, I beg your pardon. I now call on Liam MacArthur to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. <laughs> Had your turn. <laughs> it wasn't his worst speech, but I don't think I want to listen to it again, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, can I join others in congratulating uh, Mike McKenzie on bringing this debate uh, to the Parliament? I acknowledge um, his hitherto unremarked upon connection with the A9. I, I notice uh, he didn't uh, claim credit for what part of the A9 he was responsible for helping uh, build, but nevertheless, uh, I, 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 I put on record in my gratitude to him for bringing uh, this debate. And clearly, um, the, uh, the, the personal experience he has um, arising out of uh, personal tragedy, I, I think, underscores uh, his commitment to road safety and indeed reducing the alcohol um, uh, drive limit, and I think uh, that is to be uh, commended. However, I, I think it was um, perhaps betrayed in, in the, the, the peroration to his speech, uh, the political attack uh, that underlies uh, the motion and, and perhaps this debate. I, I don't necessarily see it as Danny Alexander's role, or indeed any MP's uh, uh, role for that matter, to simply get behind the SNP. I think there's undoubtedly uh, concerns about the implications of average uh, speed cameras, and those cannot simply be described uh, or dismissed as reckless. There are more than 3,000 Highlanders, including local business groups, who have called on the Scottish Government uh, to do away with um, uh, average speed cameras. And I think there is a debate to be had. I think Murdo Fraser made um, a, a valid point about the, uh, the, the data that we've seen already. I think it would be foolish of any of us uh, to leap on that and draw conclusions uh, at that stage. In fact, uh, a, a brief intervention, yeah. Mike McKenzie. I would hope that Mr MacArthur can surely agree with me that whilst the data may not be absolute definitive proof, it's nevertheless very encouraging indeed. Dave MacArthur? Well, I think, I mean, to quote the Transport Minister himself um, back in January, after only three months of average speed camera operation, police injury accident figures are not available. A longer period is required to evaluate safety performance, typically three years before and after in the case of road safety schemes. So I think the Minister himself has put on record um, some of the caution that needs to be uh, adopted when approaching uh, these figures. I think the Minister will have an opportunity in a second to respond to my comments and indeed uh, others. I think what the, the, the figures don't show is what has happened um, to reckless overtaking, whether or not this has increased, or if indeed driver frustration 
uh, has increased. And as I say, most importantly, they do not include important analysis of the safety on the road, despite what a number of SNP MSPs have taken. No, I've, I, I think we've heard uh, from you, David Thompson. Um, so the, the uh, number of business groups have raised concerns about the implications uh, of average speed cameras uh, on longer journey times. I cannot um, imagine can simply be uh, dismissed as somehow uh, reckless. I think there is a considerable uh, amount of work still to be done, particularly looking at the analysis uh, on the periods where the road is most heavily in use, as Murdo Fraser said, uh, over the summer months uh, will be illuminating in that respect. So I, I again uh, congratulate Mike McKenzie on bringing uh, today's uh, debate, uh, allowing the opportunity for the Chamber to express uh, its views uh, on this matter. As someone who is himself a regular user of the A9, who has constituents who are also regular users of, of this uh, main uh, artery north to, to south, um, can I also perhaps take the opportunity to remind uh, not just the Chamber but also the Minister uh, that uh, this is a road that doesn't just uh, stop at Inverness. There is a, a, an important chunk of it uh, between uh, Inverness and the North Coast uh, that often appears to get uh, overlooked uh, in debates around uh, the safety and indeed the duelling of the A9. But uh, let me conclude by joining, I think, um, the universal chorus uh, of, uh, 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 of support for the duelling of this uh, road. Uh, as a means of lifting its reputation as the most dangerous road uh, in the country. I would uh, also suggest that as the next protocol comes up uh, at the side of the A9, uh, perhaps note that it's uh, eight years and we still haven't seen uh, countless billions that have been provided through the UK government and Lib Dem's involvement in the, in, in the UK government being deployed in dueling that A9. Many thanks. Now call on Stuart Stevenson, followed by John Finney. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thanks to uh, Mike McKenzie for the opportunity to uh, debate this important subject. And let me declare uh, that on my register of interests, I am a member of the Institute of Advanced Motorists. Um, let me also declare I had no hand that I'm aware of whatsoever in building the A9, apart from when Transport Minister relocating uh, 41 colonies of wood ants as a result of a small improvement. They are doing very well, by the way. Um, now, have uh, safety cameras measuring average speeds changed behaviours and reduced lawbreaking? And I think the answer, with the benefit of a few months' experience, uh, has to be yes and yes. Have accidents and the numbers killed and seriously injured uh, been reduced? And again, conditionally and provisionally, I think the answer is yes. Um, I think... Uh, we need to look at what people who say we shouldn't have average speed cameras are actually saying. What they're saying is that we have a law that sets the speed limit and we don't want to enforce that law. Now, why are we choosing this law that we're not going to enforce among all other laws? Because it's a matter of personal convenience and arrogance among those who wish permission, unsupervised and unenforced, to break one of our laws. If the law is wrong, and one could argue it is, and the speed limit might not be the right speed limit, there is a way to deal with it. But putting other people's lives at risk uh, to do that is not on in any way whatsoever. Now, I very much welcome the improvements that we're seeing to the layout and engineering of the A9. Uh, the duelling all the way to Inverness will be of great benefit, uh, given that I, uh, in my... I've, distant past lived in Fife and my girlfriend lived in Inverness. You can be absolutely sure I was very familiar with that road. And indeed, uh, we as a family used to travel from Fife to Sutherland on our summer holidays every year for many years. That used to be a 12-hour journey in the previous incarnation of the A9. So today's A9 is very different from the one before and the next generation will be very different. But we'll not engineer out all the accidents and all the issues. Uh, on the A9 by making it dueling. Um, in parliamentary answers to Murdo Fraser, for example, uh, every single year that he asked questions about the M8, which is a motorway and dual carriageway, has had a higher rate of accidents per kilometre than the A9 every single year. So we don't just find ourselves in the question of engineering. And I think that's where Dave Stewart's efforts focusing on driver education and graduated driving licenses is something I absolutely support. 
members will have heard before that I'm a private pilot. And in flying, you don't simply pass your test and get the right to go off and do everything. It doesn't happen that way. You can't fly at night. You can't fly out of sight of the ground. You can't fly in clouds. You can't fly multi-engine planes. You can't fly planes with retractable undercarriage. You can't fly planes with variable pitch prop. You want to do these things, you have to go, learn, acquire the skill, get the endorsement that you've done the needful. When you pass a test, be it as a pilot or as a driver, you don't, you don't suddenly and magically acquire the experience that will enable you to cope with everything you'll meet during your career in charge of a vehicle. You have to learn it. And we have to look at whether there are ways in which uh, we can sensibly uh, help people to make the progress in a safe way. And therefore, I, I do not speak for my party, but for myself, uh, very much support the idea that we should have graduated training. Now, that does affect young people in particular. I accept that. And in rural areas such as I represent, there are particular challenges because cars are an important transport vehicle for young people. But we can do it. And I think we have to look at that for, uh, further. Frustration on the A9 or any other road is never an excuse for creating an accident or the possibility of an accident. We can't just imagine engineering solves this problem. We've got to look at the drivers as well. And that's something we don't have all the powers to do, but I hope there'll be a willingness elsewhere to help on that. Many thanks. Now call on John Finney to be followed by Jimmy McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. I too would like to commend Mike McKenzie for bringing this important issue to the Chamber. Uh, I've enjoyed the contributions thus far. I think one of the purposes of government is to provide um, a safe transport system for its citizens, and I certainly commend the efforts of the Scottish Government uh, with regard to the A9. And these are efforts that have undertaken with other agencies, the local authorities and, and some of the Transport Scotland and others. Uh, why do they do that? Well, it's a good thing to do, but it's also a very cost-effective thing to do. Now, a lot of people have talked about supporting duelling, and I'm going to add my support to the, the duelling, the duelling of the rail line, which would be a far more cost-effective than the obscene sum of money that's been spent on the A9. I've looked for reference to the, the, the Scottish Government's website, and there's an excellent document there I commend called uh, Scotland's Road Safety Framework to 2020. Um, I'll not quote the statistics in there. Many people have quoted statistics, uh, Dave Stewart, um, uh, uh, among some of them, and I commend Dave's work and uh, Mr Stewart's work in relation to uh, the, the particularly young drivers and the challenge that many people have spoken about there. But what we must remember is these statistics are about real people. Real people, real people with families, real people with neighbours, real people who live in communities. And so these communities, there's a coalition of uh, voices in support of efforts to stop the carnage that was taking place on the A9. And as has been said by, by many, the road safety cameras are but one mechanism that's being used for that. Now, that, that document uh, has some wonderful phrases in it and chapters, encouraging a drive for life culture. And I think that's what we need to encourage, reducing the tolerance of risk on roads, and we know that risk-taking is a factor, and of course the largest factor being irresponsible driver behaviour. Now, um, Mike McKenzie talked about slowing down and adding to the quality of life, and I, and I think that's an important factor, and also it's very good for the planet too. There are rights, and I think we must uphold the rights of all users to expect to travel safely, and that's not what was the position in the past. Now, I suspect I'm alone in here. I have been involved in road building in the past, not that particular road, but in having dealt with incidents as a police officer on that road, and these inc incidents um, have gone from the minor to, to the serious and involved uh, um, uh, individuals. Um, I recall being sent as a dog handler to look to see if there was a pillion passenger on a, a, a motorcycle but been told to ignore the leg that was lying in the road further along. That's the sort of things that it's not just police officers, but the other emergency services having to deal, deal with. So anything that can be done to offset the, the, the carnage, I'm in support of. Indeed, I, I wrote to the Scottish Government shortly after I was elected, and I was told that it wasn't feasible. Now, if it wasn't feasible at that time, it's certainly feasible now, and I'm very welcome that there, they have been introduced, because results from elsewhere... Um, are compelling, I think, the A77, and the experience, the anecdotal that we've heard from people, I think is very positive. It's not about road design. It is about irresponsible driver behaviour, and the most common facet of that irresponsible driver behaviour is speed. 
Now, there's been brief mention of irresponsible elected behaviour, uh, elected representative behaviour, and I too can't let it pass without saying that my Member of Parliament certainly hasn't represented me with the way that Danny Rounder has talked about this issue. I think there's a lot has changed uh, in, since I was uh, in the police service. Something else I found on the government website this afternoon was a uh, clang, and I don't know if the Minister's going to tell us about clang. I knew nothing about clang. But clang is a smartphone app, apparently, that's used by young people this was launched on the 16th of February this year, to encourage road safety using. Um, <laughs> I'm being told it's of no use for me, but what, of course, is for you is that other app the Scottish Government put in place. That's the road safety cameras. Now, that's the app that's a hands-free app. You just need to, as Stuart Stevenson said, stick to the law. I think that we were not there yet. Of course, there's still a responsible driver behaviour. This has contributed to making things better, and I, for one, welcome it. And I thank Mike McKenzie for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Thank you. Thank you. Now call on Jamie McGregor, after which we'll move to closing speech to the Minister. Um, thank you, Deputy Deciding Officer. And my congratulations to Mike McKenzie on securing a debate on the, one of the most significant and certainly the most dangerous roads to the Highlands and Islands. And it's a credit to Mr. McKenzie that he recognises this. I also um, know of the SNP pledges to duel the A9 uh, from Perth to Inverness, but when? And I wish to declare an interest in that I often drive the A9 from Edinburgh to Inverness and beyond. And some years ago, I was caught by the A9 average speed cameras beyond the fourth road bridge while on my way to a funeral in Perth. And I still maintain I was in a queue of cars who were pre pre presumably all going too fast, but nonetheless, I paid the penalty and took the points. Uh, the A9 is part dual carriageway and part two-way is a recipe for, for, uh, for danger, especially for those tourists who are used to driving on the right-hand side of the road. I remember well the words of Lord Burton, the roads convener of the old Inverness County Council. Now, that was a council. Uh, who always maintained that this road had been built with duelling in mind, and he was always furiously indignant that the, the preparations had never been taken forward. Uh, it should have been dueled much earlier. And when you look at the motorways in Spain and France and Italy, and the, 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 law, the, 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 the highways, the multiple-lane highways all over the United States, um, you realise um, that the, the poverty that uh, roads in the north of Scotland um, are, are in. Uh, yes, I will take an intervention. Dave Thompson. I, I thank the member very much indeed for taking the intervention. I wonder if he can remind us who it was that Lord Burton um, railed against in terms of uh, duelling the A9 back in those days. It was certainly well before the SNP government came into power, so it must have been Tory or the Labours or the Lib Dems. Does the member remember who it was who didn't duel the A9 then? Uh, well, well, I, mean, I have to say, I don't know who it was, no, and I don't think he did rule. He was always very pro-dueling, as far as I knew. And uh, I may say that our government, Conservatives' governments, can, um, we produce many more good roads in Scotland than any other. Um, and uh, so there you are. Um, I think that I will always agree with any scheme which reduces fatal accidents and injuries. But this cannot ever be used as any form of excuse to delay the essential duelling of Scotland's um, main backbone road, the A9. Thank you. Thanks very much. I now call on Minister Derek Mackay to conclude this debate on behalf of the Government. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I say, first of all, that road safety is of paramount importance to this Government and we are committed to reducing casualties and saving lives on roads across Scotland, including the A9. I know that there's been a great deal of local expertise brought to the table uh, in terms uh, of this issue, and also personal experience and an understanding that each accident is a tragedy for all of those involved. And as Transport Minister, I'm informed of every time there's a fatality on any road in Scotland, and it doesn't make pleasant reading because of course lying behind that will be a family or a community affected and I think it's with that level of seriousness in which we approach this subject. So I too can congratulate Mike McKenzie for bringing forward the debate and also David Stewart for the way that the Labour Party has engaged very helpfully uh, in this and even 
Myrtle Fraser, a man renowned for his balance and modesty, for his contribution to the debate as well, but actually engaging in the debate with an open mind. And I think that that's fair, rather than the closed mind of some who have engaged in, in the debate out with this chamber in a more opportunistic uh, fashion. But as well as the loss of human life, there's also a, a cost, of course, uh, to the disruption caused by accidents. I'll commit again to this government seeing through the duelling work on the A9 at a cost of an estimated £3 billion by 2025. That's uh, 80 miles of work in quite challenging circumstances. But that commitment is strong and a commitment, I have to say, that's a first for an executive or a Scottish government of this parliament to commit to those uh, works and we'll complete them as quickly as we possibly can. And it is about education and driver behaviour as well and we'll continue to support educational campaigns led by the Road Safety Partnership to address issues such as inappropriate driver behaviour, including excessive speed, close following, unsafe overtaking, because it does contribute to a significant proportion of road uh, accidents uh, generally. And we will do it uh, in partnership. And there are a range of other works going on, not just the deployment of the average speed cameras, such as new lining and signing, vegetation clearance, high visual profile policing and targeted education campaigns, as well as the average speed uh, cameras. But the average speed cameras have been deployed based on evidence, which is a key point, and also within the route of where the highest accident records were uh, as well. And some people have called them money-generating schemes. They're not. They're about safety and deployment where they make the biggest difference. And the evidence tells us that they are making uh, a difference. In terms of public views, in the spring of last year, 78% of those we spoke to anticipated that such cameras would be effective or very effective in making the route safer. And recent surveys and polls, such as in the press and journal, have suggested that a majority of people uh, do think it's having a positive impact on driver behaviour. Some 56% of those surveyed uh, through the press and journal felt that the average speed cameras have had a positive effect uh, on driving uh, behaviour. So I take Myrtle Fraser's point about public opinion, but I would argue that I think public opinion has moved as the experience has been that they've made a difference on the ground or, or on the road. And the evidence from the stats that we have from the first performance figures tell us that excessive speeding is down. Often the bane of journeys between Perth and Inverness has been reduced by 97%. Speeding overall is down from one in three vehicles to one in 20 and change of this magnitude does reflect significant improvements in driver behaviour. But I've been comprehensive in my response, and I would say to Liam MacArthur, I've said we need to look at the accident statistics as well, but those figures that we do have tell a very positive story about how speeding has uh, come down, and I believe the incidents and the disruption caused has also uh, fallen. And despite comments to the contrary, traffic isn't diverting from the A9 onto other roads and the A9 is very much open for business and there's better journey time reliability and I accept that there has been a slight increase for some in the average journey times between a scale of three and, and 14 minutes but I do believe that that's a price worth paying for a safer road. Of course. Carlton. Um, I'm very grateful to the Minister uh, for taking the intervention. Um, would you be able to comment at this stage in terms of the, the way in which the figures are able to disaggregate the implementation of the uh, speed cameras from the introduction of roadworks at key sections on that, on that road? Well, I think Understand. there's a, a level of analysis that would be required there, but what's pretty consistent where you look at the, some of the stats we've produced in the, in the briefing for today, it certainly shows a correlation between the installation or even perceived installation of the average speed cameras and the reduction uh, in speeding. So I don't think it's any coincidence. And of course, uh, in terms of the questions that have been raised around further deployment of average speed cameras in other parts of Scotland. We don't have any plans to satisfy the members who have raised this issue to deploy average speed cameras to any new area as a, an isolated road safety measure. But where there are further major construction works, then we'll judge it on a case-by-case -case basis to see whether they should be deployed as part of the package that's clearly worked here on the A9. 
where the number of drivers being detected and prosecuted for speeding offences has fallen eightfold. So this clearly illustrates both the effectiveness of average speed camera systems and the fairness of its, of its operation. And it's delivered far higher enforcement levels than were previously possible, yet provides much higher compliance levels than other methods. So we'll embark on further educational campaigns, not just about the A9, uh, but focusing on the A9 uh, as well, because many of these educational messages are relevant uh, the country uh, over. And I think it is right that the government listened on wider speed limits as it happens as well in, in the Highlands, but specifically on the HGV issue too as part of that package. We have a clear commitment around duelling, of course. I appreciate the, the work the government is doing on the increase to 50 mile an hour of HGVs, and I appreciate as well that you'll need some years to analyse the results of this. Uh, but I understand there has been changes in England in these speed limits. Would you be analysing evidence from England in terms of looking at a wider rollout? Minister? Well, we will consult very closely and look at the evidence in England south of the border. It is only a consultation in this stage in terms of the HGV speed limit. Uh, increases. I have to say this government is not convinced that it would be the right thing to do from a blanket uh, position, but we will look very closely at the consultation and then if it's implemented, the evidence that it produces, uh, but we're not convinced uh, that the evidence is established that we should take a blanket increase across uh, the roads um, of Scotland, but we'll give it careful consideration. In terms of the um, question around consultation with local communities, of course we want to consult and, and actually getting the plans, the proposals, the consultations and the road orders correct. That's, that's why there's so much time taken up in the preparation for the duelling work, which is broken down to 12 uh, phases to ensure that the duelling is, is properly planned and we engage with local people what the engineering solutions uh, look like. In terms of Clang, you're absolutely right, Mr Finney. I was able to have the pleasure of launching that app for young people to engage in road safety in a way that they enjoy so much so that I can't get my hands on my own iPad because my own sons now want to play that very popular Scottish Government uh, road safety uh, game. Uh, but uh, it's very, very well, very well uh, received. But on a more serious note, uh, engagement with, with communities is absolutely vital going forward. I do want to finish on the somewhat politicisation eh, of it because I, I do feel that some have focused more on electioneering rather than the safety of their constituents. And apparently I'm called by Danny Alexander, a, a part of the Edinburgh elite. I've been called many things in politics, presiding officer, but no, certainly not part of any elite and not Edinburgh based eh, either. I wouldn't ask Danny Alexander as the constituency MP to get behind the SNP. I'd just ask him to get behind road safety in the interest of his constituents because surely they are paramount. And I think Liam MacArthur is a, a gentleman, maybe even the token Liberal Democrat, the apologist for Danny Alexander today. But if the Liberals were so keen on duelling the A9, I do wonder why they didn't do anything about it when they were in office for eight years or indeed when the Chief Secretary to the Treasury is reducing the capital budget uh, in Scotland. So I think there are ways that Danny Alexander could have helped in duelling of the A9 and has failed to do so. But I would ask them, of course. Jamie McGregor. I, I just remember very well our ex-colleague John Farker Monroe, well-known Lib Dem MSP, suggesting that the duelling should go as far as Wick. Minister. Well, I commend the member for trying to get me to extend the duelling commitment beyond the current uh, limitations, but I think that £3 billion commitment within 10 years and 80 miles of challenging road network is ambitious enough, but of course we'll look to extend it as resources uh, allow, and I again congratulate the member for making that bid. But to Danny Alexander, I would say stop the political posturing, look at the evidence and recognise that public opinion has moved. Safety has to be paramount. And I believe that it's not about getting behind the SNP. I believe that Dan Alexander has been getting at the SNP and it should stop and them should go on and working in partnership to make all our roads safer, but particularly the A9. And once again, commend Mike McKenzie for bringing this very important debate to the Chamber. Many thanks, and I thank you all for taking part in this important debate, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.